Welcome back to the channel. We're Dan and Stephen, two guys living in our VW camper van since 2021. In between jobs, we travel the UK and beyond while learning to adapt to life in a tiny home on the road. This week, our European adventures come to a close as we make our way from Portugal back to the UK, bringing an end to an unforgettable journey. So sit back, relax, and come along, dear. Good morning. Uh, I don't know what time it is. I don't care, neither does he. Um, we went out last night and it was really good fun. And if we're gonna talk about it, we're gonna talk about it later because we're absolutely, there's a bug crawling across the screen. And that's all I have to say because nothing's functioning, nothing's happening, today's, today's done. That's it, done. That's, that's it, that's all you're getting today. Oh. All right, Steve. Hi. Hi. Back to Scottish now. Hi. Hi. Right, good afternoon. Um, so <laughs> we've taken ages to get going today. We had a really good time, but it was very late by the time we came out. The vodkas were, oh my God, I've never seen anything like it. It was almost all vodka in a glass. All we said was two vodka and Cokes, and it was just like, they were just, like it's normal. This happened in Spain quite a lot, actually. And it was just poured nearly to the top. Um, and then a little bit of Coke in, so that was lethal, but a lot of fun. Um, so we did that, had a really good time, had a little bit of a dance, which almost never happens. Um, and then made our way back and we actually missed all the trams because they stopped at one in the morning. And what we had to do was figure out how to get a taxi, but we did manage it. We got back safely. It's just, we're feeling very worse aware this morning. So we slept in as you saw, um, but basically we've left Porto now. We're driving a couple of hours and we are going to a place called Braganza. Um, and it's in the very northeast of Portugal, which works out for us because it will take us back, hopefully towards France and back home. Um, I say hopefully, we don't want to do it, but we've got to go back, basically. Okay, so we're in Braganza and <laughs> We, um, yeah, we're in Braganza, northeast Portugal, and last night we went to see, we came here to see a friend that Stephen had not seen for a long, long time. So that was absolutely lovely. Neil, sir, it was lovely to meet you. Uh, it was great for Stephen to catch up with you, and thank you for showing us around the city um, and taking us out for a few drinks, and also allowing us to try some really lovely Portuguese food that we'd otherwise have no idea how to order. <laughs> so that we appreciate that so much, and it was really nice to meet you and go out. So yeah, um, we we hopefully will come back. I really hope we do come back. We are in a little air in Braganza and it's really handy. It's just by the castle and it's also just by the town. Um, it's a free air and it's got the usual services. So really appreciate it. We're on a bit of a slope, but it's all right. And we're gonna go and explore the castle. I said all this earlier, but I think I messed it up. So I'm not sure if it's gonna make the video or not, but if it does, this won't. So <laughs> one of them will basically. Braganza is a place you might not have on your radar, and its position in northeast Portugal means a lot of people bypass it for the coastal route. But it took us by complete surprise, and strolling down its historic streets, particularly in the Old Town, among the multitude of eye catching buildings, it feels like discovering a hidden part of Portugal. Of course, it's not really, but it definitely feels off the tourist track compared to many of the places we'd seen. Also, we can't speak for everyone's experience, but we found it great value for money compared to those other locations, including in this amazing Italian restaurant where we had a delicious lunch. But Braganza's crown jewel, of course, is its 13th century medieval castle. Sitting atop a hill, it towers over the city and is one of the best preserved castles in the country. It's free to walk around the grounds, where there are a couple of bars and restaurants, and from atop the walls are stunning views over the surrounding landscape. What's even more amazing is the free air is right at the base of the castle. You have to put Braganza on the map, because it's absolutely worth a day or two spent here. There's our little days, right there. So all of this is the motorhome there, basically all of this space, and this one here. 
So as you can see, there's many paths leading up to the castle we walked around. Um, and there's toilets as well, which is really good. Not in the actual air itself, but just, just further up the road. So such a lovely spot. And look at all that countryside. So you can see why the castle and the citadel was placed on top of this hill for this amazing view. And you can park up there for free in order to visit this beautiful castle. And you can't ask for more than that, to be honest. Bright flashing by the street lights. Keep waiting till you've arrived. Let it unfold. Let it unfold. Give me a reason to feel right. I keep waiting for the morning light. I let him fall. Let Stevie? I don't know. No, I don't either. Into Spain. <laughs> Into Spain. We're crossing the border again. And two and a half hours later, we have arrived. We're in Palencia. 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 Valencia? Valencia, but with a P, is it? Yeah, Valencia. Valencia? I'm sure it's Palencia. Oh, I don't know. We're somewhere. so hot it is so hot I can't remember if I talked about this yesterday we've been in this little place I'll put the name down there I'm not even gonna to attempt to pronounce it I just saw the sign it's called like Saint Soul Peace something um, cute little village and I've just been for a run down the countryside and it's just so like quintessentially French it's brilliant it's just fields there's wild fields there's vineyards growing they're just coming into leaf um, you've got the Dordoin River uh, and if that's how you say it, just little farmhouses, some horses in some fields, it is so beautiful. And we're going to make a move tonight, aren't we? We. Oui. We, oui. yeah, back to hello and yes, yeah, soon. Back to oi, mate. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, but I think I explained, we're, we're probably not going to be able to fit anything in, so this will be just a, a general travelling across the country video. Um, we might get one last little thing in, maybe but we'll see, possibly close to Calais, because we are going to run out of time. Um, I'm going to stop to see my uncle, who I haven't seen for a long time. Uh, he lives in northern France now, so it's, we thought it was close to Calais, but actually it's some distance away. So we are going to make our way there the uh, day after tomorrow, um, spend a couple of days with him, which will be really nice, and then make our way home, where we have work. <laughs> but more travels ahead as well, more UK travels. and a big old shower so for those wondering how you do this on the road without having to check into a campsite 
it is very possible to get by and shower as you go. And I think if you're in a van, a lot of us know, you know, it's not a lot of people think, well, that's not new news, um, showering in service stations. But actually, there's probably a lot of people that aren't aware of it and they're more commonplace than you think. So you do have to check online. Uh, Park for Night's pretty good for that sort of thing, but Google might bring it up as well. This is a weird one as well. It's like some of them last quite a while and some of them you have to press. They last for like three seconds and then you have to press it again or you just keep holding it in. So <laughs> it's always pop up to be honest. And this one's like a really sort of harsh spray, um, but it'll be all right. Oh my god, never underestimate the luxury of a shower, seriously, because I don't think we ever will again. And because we have to have them quite sparingly these days, we appreciate them so much more. So, yeah, thank god for service station showers, that's all I can say. <laughs> Where are we off to, Stevie? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Hon Fleur. Hon Fleur. Hon Fleur. So our final stop before the ferry, basically. Okay, so we are on our way. We've just, this has all been very complicated. I'm not sure how this is all gonna come together. Um, we haven't been able to do some final uh, little adventures, which is a bit of a shame, but there has been very good reason for that. A couple of days ago we went to see a family member of mine and that was lovely we've just left there today it was I'm not gonna go into detail we didn't want to film all that you know it wasn't that was that was that was a private thing you know it's a family thing um, but it was somebody I hadn't seen for a long time so it was lovely to see them and catch up and yeah a bit emotional and you know it's, it, it was nice right we just paid the toll so yes in other words um, going to Honfleur one final little stop and hopefully we get to show you some of the place tomorrow um, before we leave for Calais. So we've got to you know, make sure we allow for good time for checking in and stuff. It's still gonna be about three hours from Honfleur, you see. Um, but hopefully we can show you a little bit of it and hopefully that means the last video won't just be me talking into this camera while we're sat in a car with the van because that's what it feels like. Uh, it's been a bit of a weird one. So we don't, like, as I keep saying, we don't know how it's gonna to come together. Um, but maybe Honfleur will end it in a nice way leading up to the ferry. We will see. So we'll see you in Honfleur. Okay, so we're in, on, in Honfleur. It is a massive site. Um, we didn't think there's gonna be enough room, but there, there was some room, uh, but there is tons of motorhomes here. It's 12 euros a night, uh, but we haven't paid yet, so I'm not sure how that works. Um, we just drove in, but there's electric hookup, uh, which is good. And I don't know what other facilities there are, but that's it. We just wanted a little bit of, just something, a bit of comfort on the last night before we travel back, basically. So, got us a hookup so we can charge things up a bit easier. So let's go and see what Herm Hon Fleur's got, shall we? Hmm. We're gonna put the bed up. Yeah, we're gonna put the bed up first. This is one of the things we regularly do if we go for a walk in the evening because it's just a pain in the ass to do it when you get back, basically. Yeah, so we might just find a bar accidentally, um, as we tend to find them accidentally. So, you know. We'd seen the images online and heard all about it, but it's not until you wander the streets of Honfleur that you truly appreciate its oldie worldy French beauty. Everywhere you look resembles something from a painting, so it's no surprise then that Honfleur has long been popular with artists, including Claude Monet, whose mentor was born here. Colourful timber framed houses line the streets and among them sits the 15th century St Catherine's Church, the largest wooden church in France and a pure delight to behold. And of course there is the unbelievably eye catching harbour. Just be aware that you'll be jostling for space with many others here, but that goes hand in hand with being one of France's most visited towns.
So we are in Honfleur, which is lovely, and it is very, very pretty. It definitely lives up to its reputation. Um, so a few people on YouTube and Instagram that have been here. It was Missy Jo in a Paulson motorhome, actually. So on her channel, she came here in a motorhome. And I looked at it and I thought, actually, yeah, this seems like a really nice place to go. So, you know, if you want to check anyone out, she, she does some really nice tours all over the UK. And she's done quite a few in Europe as well. She's got a really good uh, Belgian series out, uh, traveling around Belgium in a motorhome. Um, so, yeah, Missy Jo, Menopausal Motorhomer. Uh, I don't know, I could probably put the link or something, but she's really good to follow. Um, and she gave us the idea for this place and I'm so glad we did it we, and we thought one place to stop on the way home and we've managed it you know and we've come here just for one night we've only got a couple of hours in the morning before we've got to go to the ferry so I'm glad we've come here so thank you Joe. appreciate that it's our last night in France Stevie we we <laughs> we're back to the wee's it's been a while wee. a bittersweet wee. wee but a nice nostalgic sort of wee wee, wee. Well, bye bye Honfleur. That was actually a very beautiful place. Um, shame, shame we didn't really get more chance to explore it. Very strange air though, absolutely massive. Uh, but it's 12 euros, you get electric, which is great, but no toilets. So, depends what you value more, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we prefer the toilets. Yeah, we do, <laughs> we do prefer the toilets. Although it does depend, you know, the electric is obviously very useful. Have you enjoyed our trip, Stevie? I have very much so. The only answer is yes, obviously, right? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we are on our way, uh, we're approaching Calais, um, it feels a bit sad doesn't it? We, we do appreciate everything we've done, we've had a really amazing trip, it's just, you know, it's just like, um, it's, it's been amazing, we cannot complain at anything, you know, it's just that thing of going home, but who gets to go away for nearly three months, you know what I mean? It's amazing, the fact we've got to do that is so good, and we've got to do that because we changed our life in order to be able to do it. Um, and we're so grateful, we're so happy. Uh, we've got to go back and do some work soon, obviously. I mean, this doesn't pay for itself, but the way- Save for our next adventure. Yeah, save for our next adventure. And we'll have mini adventures in the UK. So that's what's gonna happen throughout the year, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it's been lovely. And I'm, I'm, it, this is one of the, all of this, it's like, this is why we changed our life. This is why we ditched the norm, got the van. We know we're not the only ones to do it, but this is the reason why you do it. You know, you have extra time before it's too late and you have time and can still see things and do things that you, you, you wouldn't normally do or would never have got to do. So we're really happy, really grateful. And it's been an amazing trip, an amazing trip, apart from that accident, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> but that's, that's part of the journey, I guess. Um, but yeah, we're heading to the boat, we're gonna board sail back across the channel, uh, go and see my mum and just get a bag of chips. That's what we're gonna do. Get a bag of chips. Looking forward to that. With all its obstacles and sacrifices, living in a van isn't a dream and yet it has allowed dreams to come to life. For Stephen, it has given him the freedom he desperately craved and the precious gift of time in a life that is short of it. For myself, once, many moons ago, even stepping out the front door seemed an impossible task, a normal life seemed beyond reach. And yet through darkness, with great effort, there was hope, and a future. That future eventually led here with Stephen, living this funny old life together in our little camper van. Thank you for coming along on our journey and for all the support and feedback we've had along the way. It really gives us a boost. And if you've not subscribed yet, well, no time like the present. Do stick around though, because we'll see you back in the UK for more van adventures very soon. In the meantime, how about a little montage? Cause I'm restless and I'm dying to know more Show me something, show me something I haven't seen before
for Cause I'm tired of the same boats, the same shore 